After a long winter break, we are in sight of the 2019 Australian Grand Prix and the 2019 Formula 1 season is just over 40 days away and we are all really, really excited. So guys, welcome back to the F1 Debate Show in 2019. We are so excited to be back on your screen to follow the 2019 Formula 1 season with you guys and hopefully grow as a Formula 1 entertainment YouTube channel. My name is Lyle, Jordan is on the other end as always and welcome to episode 101 and I believe we're in triple Hello. digits now and this is going to be our 2019 driver predictions for the Formula 1 season, you know, where they're going to end up, who is going to finish at last, who is going to end up in the Formula 1 table and obviously who is going to be crowned the 2019 Formula 1 world champion. Now you might have noticed something quite quirky about this episode. You know, we have a special guest on our on our channel. Uh, please welcome Alex, who we have mentioned him before. Uh, we also uh, we also had his documentary in one of our episodes back in November. So he is doing a motorsport related uh, course for his university. He's also set up a GoFundMe page about a documentary in Formula One. So obviously it's a good YouTube channel. We're going to include the link in our description below. Alex, welcome to the F1 Debate Show. Hello, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. It's nice to meet yep, you guys, uh, Lyle and Jordan. Obviously, I've been speaking to you guys over like DMs for uh, yeah. what, a couple of months now, yeah. and you guys have kindly yeah, donated right. to my project, and I want to help in any way possible to, to say back, or come back and say thank you to you guys. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. It's going to be you know, interesting to see what we're saying for top 20 yes. or all of the guys on the grid. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, that's great, Alex. Yeah, you're very welcome. So obviously, as I say, we're going to include the link in the description box. Obviously, please go and check out his channel, guys. Um, obviously, check out ours as well. You know, do that first. Um, and uh, and yeah, you know, let's make this episode a really good one. So obviously, Alex, uh, we'll start you off. We'll chuck you in in the deep end. Yep, yes, uh, yes. So obviously, um, as I say, we're going to do our predictions. Um, so how we're going to do this episode, guys? Just quickly, we are going to do if we are going to list it from twentieth to fifteenth. So that's like the back guys, you know, who's not going to do very well, who's going to fail a lot in this in this uh, season, who's going to end up with zero points and things like that. We are then going to go from 14th to 10th, you know, who's going to be in the business end, you know, just missing out on the top 10 spot, but who's going to be fighting, you know, points, you know, regularly getting into top 10s, Q3s, you know, but just missing out on the, the big silverware of this season. Then we are going to go from 9th to 4th, you know, who is going to be chasing the World Championship, who's going to be getting, you know, podiums here and there, you know, regular points, possibly a race win, and who is going to be fighting up there in the top teams. I mean, you're probably looking at, the, you know, the big four teams, you know, people that are going to be chasing their Force Indias of the like. And then obviously the podium of the World Championship, who is going to be third, who is going to be second, who is going to just miss out on the World Championship, and obviously who is going to be crowned the 2019 World Champion. It's all really, really exciting. Obviously, it's going to be a long episode, guys, but we are really happy that you're here, and we hope you enjoy it. So, Alex, obviously, as I say, deep end, we're going to chuck you in there. Uh, so, what is your predictions from 20th to 15th? All right, so, yeah, I'll run through the... The list of my 20th to 15th then i go through the reasoning for it so uh, i've got my list here if anyone's wondering why i'm looking down <laughs> that's because it's here um, but yeah so i've got alexander albon to finish last place in the championship um then Kubica 19th norris 18th Sainz 17th kuviat 16th and russell 15th so i don't know if that's like a safe bet because they were sort of the worst three teams on the grid last year but i think alexander albon probably will struggle the most going to this season he's probably i think he is the most unexperienced or inexperienced driver on the grid so i think he's gonna have a lot of learning to do and last year tour also did struggle somewhat yep. uh, with their car especially reliability but maybe now with red bull there as well maybe two teams running the 100 power unit it might actually come good i don't know but i'm just gonna put a safe bet and say that least experienced guy in a car that's unreliable is gonna be at the back um but then qubits i know this is the one that get you know a lot of talking points but I don't think that Williams is going to be particularly good this year. Of course, they've probably got some funding coming in through Kubica and from Mercedes as well with uh, Russell. But I think they're going to struggle to make up that gap because they were so far behind the rest of the cars last year. I'd really be surprised if they managed to make that up and then go even further. But I think Kubica probably will score a couple of points. I really hope he does. It'd be an incredible story for Formula 1. But uh, I can't see him going out there and getting like multiple podiums. But... I, I would love yeah. to be proven wrong on that one. But in terms of 18th, Lando Norris, I think once again, quite an inexperienced guy, uh, but he's very, very talented. We saw how quickly he jumped into a Formula 2 car and then just went ahead and got victory or got, got a victory on multiple podiums. He's in a car that's you know back of the grid once again with McLaren. As weird as that is to say, McLaren are still towards the back of the grid, so I think it might be tough for them to, to push their way forward. But 
I think they're going to be in a tough position this year, McLaren, because they've got two guys sort of brand new to the team in a way of like racing. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how they do. But I think Norris, just because a bit less experience, will finish behind Science, who I put in 17th. So I think, once again, he's a pretty talented, well, he's a very talented driver, but I can't see McLaren making a yeah. substantial step forward. As much as I think as British F fans would love that, I don't think that that will happen too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I yeah. sadly don't think it's going to happen too much in, in 2019. I think it'll get better, but I don't see them going ahead and getting yeah. victories. I mean, that's probably a bit too far ahead. <laughs> but maybe a couple of points here and there. Um, then I put Kuvia in 16th, along with Albon. I think the Torosso is just going to be a... a a tough car but maybe slightly biased on this one I mean a lot of people know that I'm a, a Kvyat fan so probably gonna get a little stick for putting him 16th um, I can see a lot of people probably putting him last in the championship yeah. through his uh, past exploits but we'll see I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and hope that pace that he had a few years ago comes strong uh, and then 15th put George Russell I think this guy got so much talent I think he not that he didn't completely dominate the Formula 2 championship, but he won it in a way that was very similar to Charles Leclerc. And they're both rookies, both in decent teams. So I think George Russell, a similar age to, to Leclerc at the same time, is going to be, in my opinion, he's a bit of a superstar. I'm looking, really looking forward to seeing him in yeah. a Formula 1 car. And of all the rookies, I think, even though he's probably not in the best car, he'll probably be the best rookie, if that makes any sense. Of course, we've got Giovinazzi, yeah. which we'll get into a bit, but he's not technically a rookie, and at the same time, he's probably going to be in a much better car. But uh, yeah, I'll hand over to Jordan. Now, what's your predictions for well, 2019? Well, for my predictions, I mean, first of all, this has probably probably been the hardest predictions I've ever had to, to make, because there's so many new people coming in for new teams, we've got new drivers, it's going to be like, it was literally just like, throw you know, names of drivers up in the air and just literally catch them like that and then whatever was what, and, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Because that, that's how I just don't, I simply just do not know. And obviously, with us doing mm. the, these predictions before pre-season, which is what I like, the element of surprise, we haven't got pre-season to back us up in terms of how reliable the cars be because we, we make our predictions and they could be, you know, all over the place for whatever, you know, uh, album could win the championship for all we know. So I've gone for 20th place, I've gone the same with, uh, same with Alex, I've gone with Alex Albon in 20th. In 19th, I've got Anto An uh, Antonio Giovinazzi. 18th, I've got Robert Kubica. 17th, I've got Daniel Kvyat. Uh, 16th, I've got George Russell. And 15th, I've got Lando Norris. Now, Alex Albon to finish last, I think, like, he was thrown in pretty much last minute. I think it was, like, the last driver announced for last season, I believe, or one of the last anyways. He, he was supposed to have a season in Formula E, I believe, then obviously got, got called back uh, back into Toro Rosso. So, I can't see him doing amazingly I think he's a good driver don't get us wrong they all, they, all of them are really good drivers but in terms of Formula 1 terms I can't see him doing brilliant things obviously in the Toro Russell I don't know how you know how much progress that, that car is going to do this season obviously with as like, as like Alex said with Red Bull on the side now with Honda development might work might go further but you know I really, to be fair I really don't know Antonio Giovinazzi coming 19th now he, ha he has competed in two races before let's not, let's not talk about them one in particular as well when he crashed in the same place twice back in China a couple of years ago so um, but uh, I'm not putting these drivers in terms of place in terms of ability I think Giovinazzi is a brilliant driver I think this is this isn't going to go down on an ability or speed. This is going to go down on reliability, because a lot of these cars, especially the McLaren and the Williams and stuff, you know, how 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 reliable are, are they going to be? Are they going to be faster? Are they going to be slower? You know, nobody nobody knows at this stage. So, Antonio Giovinazzi, I think it's going to have nineteen. I think it's going to have a. It's going to be close. It's it, it is going to be quite a close table this year, I, I believe. Eighteenth is going to be Robert Robert Kubica. Now, a, a lot of people will be probably raising their eyebrows. Uh, that and I do understand why a lot of people are going towards more towards Robert Kubica this season because of how, you know, how liked he is and how did he how well he did in his uh, in his previous stint in Formula One. But you know these are totally different cars. You know, and he has got a problem with his arm. Let's not forget that it's not he's not going to be the same Robert Kubica. Obviously, we have explained this before. He's not going to be the same driver he once was before. He could he could surprise us. He could just go out and just you know, dominate, you know, lap times or whatever, you know, you could pull out some really impressive laps in the Williams if it's not going to be, a, you know, a competitive car. Look at what Alonso has been doing the past couple of years in McLaren, you know, getting an extra two or three tenths out of the car when really, you know, it should be better off in the scrapyard, you know what I mean? So, in 17th, I've gone with Daniel Kvyat, his return into Formula 1. He has got a lot to prove as well. He has had a you know a bit of a, a deteriorating last two seasons in Formula 1. It was a bit sad to see a promising young talent coming through damaged by his reputation I believe I think he's got a lot more to offer 
but obviously I, 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 I can see him having a better season this year and I think he will stay on for another season or two perhaps but obviously you know as, as I said it's, it's going to be too close to call 16th George Russell he's going to have a, a solid average you know I would, I would say solid average I don't make any sense I would say an average first part of the season uh, first full season rather George Russell brilliant brilliant talent you know he's got a lot a prospect in him there's as like I said there's loads of brilliant drivers coming through as well and he's British as well so obviously I'll be backing him to do well next Lewis Hamilton he's part of the city's junior program who knows obviously only time will tell 15th Lando Norris from my team McLaren I'm backing him all the way Lando Norris very very excited about him and the McLaren car I can't see it being you know brilliant as what people were saying I mean half the half the media are saying it's gonna be a really bad car half the, same, half the media saying it's gonna be a really good car you know as like I said, only we'll, we'll see what happens when we get pre-season. But I think Norris, he's good. But how good is he going to be in the car this year? Obviously, I, obviously, I, re I really don't know. So, as like I said, it's going to be quite tight at the bottom. I think it's going to be you know quite solid in terms of you know how not only the bottom but the top. I think it's going to be quite close this year in terms of standings as well. So I'm really, really excited for the season. Let's not forget. But that is my twentieth to fifteenth. So Lyle, me and, me and Alex have said ours. What's yours? Tell me. Right, well, mine, uh, I mean, <clears throat> like Jordan's, you know, it yes. was quite hard to do. Uh, I'm really excited for this season, man. You know, so I've got some big names coming in. You know, we've had a big shuffle of the driving market. Obviously, I remember this time last year, you know, no, almost nobody had moved. It was quite boring, really. Uh, so, obviously, this is kind of my the bottom of the table for me. Um, you know, I'm matching Alex. I'm matching Jordan here. You know, Alex Albon is 20th position. Uh, you know, not much to say about him, really. Uh, 19th place is Danny Fiat. 18th place, George Russell. 17th is Robert Kubica, 16th is Antonio Giovinazzi, and 15th is Lance Stroll. Now, obviously, going back to 20th position, uh, Alex Albon, I mean, there's not much to say about him. To be honest, um, he kind of reminds me of a bit of Rio Harrianto, really. So, remember, in 2016, when Rio Harrianto came in, he was a bit of a last-minute call-up as well for the team. Um, I mean, Tom Russell on the dime team, like, uh, you know, Manor were at that point, no offence Manor, but, you know, Rio was, it was also for the money as well, obviously, I know Alex Albon brings quite a lot of money as well, obviously, Thai British, obviously, uh, you know, tied in um, with that, you know, brings a bit of money to the team, obviously, they need that kind of kick, um, and, I mean, no one really kind of had any bit of, any, any hype about him, um, you know, weren't really sure what was going to happen, I mean, to be honest, it was, you know, was Brendan Hartley going to be re-signed, I was hoping for that, when he wasn't, it was a big shock, and then it was like, who's going to who's going to be next to you know Mr. Torpedo? And obviously, it was Alex Albon, who no one really had heard of at that point. It was yeah. a bit of a shock. Um, so obviously, Nat Fishing is obviously his teammate, Danny Fiat. Now he has been very, very unlucky in Formula One. Obviously, Red Bull down to Toro Rosso, and then from Toro Rosso he left. He, he was kicked out again. It was really, really unbelievable. I mean, it feels like it feels like the F on the beach was being made around Danny Fiat because you know all the way back in like episode eleven, yeah. episode ten, episode eleven, you know we were talking about him. It was insane. Um, but I'm happy he's back. You know, he's got a big following. Obviously, Alex said, you know, he's, he's a fan of, of Danny Fiat, <laughs> uh, probably when he was at Red Bull, uh, more than when he was at Toro Rosso. But, you know, he's got, a, he's got a bit of a potential, but he's really got to climb that ladder. I think with Danny Fiat, everyone's behind him. It's kind of like that kid that got, you know, picked on at school. It's like, when you're seeing, when you're seeing him succeed, it's like, oh my God, it's, it's crazy. Um, in the position is George Russell now, obviously, yeah, you know, champion of, uh, you know, F2 champion, obviously, really, really great guy. Uh, you know, really young talent for the team, British, just looks like, he wants to be there. He's he's happy for the opportunity. He look when you see him in press conferences and that in photos, you know, it just looks like he's just happy to be there and that's it. Um I, I just think that he's just, I don't want to say that he's not ready, but I think that Formula One's gonna be a big dive for him. You know, something that he really isn't kind of ready for at the moment. And the thing is, I think he probably would be ready if he was with a better team. I just don't see Williams, you know, bringing him, like, helping him that much. And obviously, in 17, there's his teammate, Robert Kubica, who, you know, me and Jordan have had our doubts about him, you know, so much. And we've talked about him, and he's been in about four episodes, you know, last year. Is he ready? Is, is you know, what's what's happening with him? Is he is he trying to make it a Michael Schumacher comeback? You know, when he came back with Mercedes, it's it's a bit all over the place, really. So, Robert, I, just, I don't want to see Robert getting any higher. Um, I know your teammate isn't there just to help you, but with Robert in the team, I feel like he'll get a lot of help. George Russell, it'll, it'll be a big step for him. I just don't see Williams helping him too much. And I see them, to be honest, I see them as a team kind of struggling this year, you know, more than like Sauber or anyone like that, Tor Russell, even though Tor Russell are at the back. Um, 16th place is Antonio Giovinazzi. Now, I don't like the thing about his first two races. As John mentioned, you know, China was just, it was just a failure. Absolutely ridiculous. You know, we all, well, it's just, it's, 
ridiculous, really. <laughs> a bit like Bahrain 2014, you know, we all remember Esteban, Oc- uh, Esteban Gutierrez, sorry. Uh, you know, we remember China uh, 2016 for that. It was just, wow. Um, I, I don't see Salah making much gains in this year. Um, Antonio Giovinazzi, again, a bit like Danny Fiat, you know, he's been in Formula 1. He wasn't demoted like, you know, Dan- like uh, Danny was. Um, it was just a bit of a shift around, uh, but I, I just don't see Antonio Giovinazzi really moving forward. But the big guy I want to talk about in 15s is obviously Lance Stroll. Now, you know, he is a talent in Formula 1. I'm sorry, Lance, I just don't think that he's ready for Formula 1. I don't see that him being that strong. I feel like he's a good guy in other categories. You know, with the Formula 3 Asia series that he won, you know, on his own, and obviously he's won other races, you know, coming through like the North American route. So he's a good driver, but Formula 1, he just wasn't ready. Obviously, his dad brought a lot of money into Williams when he was there. Force India, obviously, were going under. Uh, he then, you know, backed them up. Um, I don't, you know, he gave a lot of money into that. And I, yeah, I just, I just, I just feel like you know Lawrence has bought Lance's seat. I don't feel like he's you know ready for Formula One yet. Um, you know, he's still a good driver, and obviously, I think that he'll do well. You know, he might have a few points here and there. Obviously, for example, like the Canadian Grand Prix home race. You know, I think he showed promise last year, but. I just, yeah, I, I just don't. I think he's getting a seat bought for him. I don't think he's ready for Formula One just yet. Um, so obviously that's kind of my the back of my grid. Um, so you know the, the drivers in there, you know the good, the show and promise. The things that are letting them down is sometimes their ability, the teams, and have they got enough experience? Obviously, for example, like George Russell hasn't got enough. Uh, Robert Kubica, he's probably got a bit too much. He's probably. I mean, I, I didn't think he was ready for Formula One. Uh, Formula One, anyways. And also Williams just aren't really going to yeah. be there to help him. Um, so obviously that's the back of my grid. Uh, and then obviously, so I'm going to go now from 14th to 10th, then Jordan and then Alex. Uh, so my 14th position to 10th, I'm going to go in 14th position, I'm going to put Kimi Raikkonen. In 13th position, I'm going to put Kevin Magnussen. Uh, 12th, I'm going to put Roman Grosjean. 11th, I'm going to put Sergio Perez, Checo. And in 10th place, I'm going to put uh, Nico Hulkenberg. So 14th position, Kimi Raikkonen. Now, um... It's very strange what he did. Um, he wasn't ready to leave Formula 1. It wasn't like he fought tooth and nail to stay in Formula 1. Um, you know, you can compare a lot of what Kimi's done to Felipe Massa. Obviously, had a very successful career at Ferrari. Obviously, Kimi did you know, much better than Felipe. Uh, he kind of swapped places, you know, to let you know, more experience come in the team. Um, but, obviously, the difference is with Felipe Massa, he went to Williams to kind of... They needed him to join the team. That's kind of the same for Sauber. Obviously, he, you know, departed Ferrari... I want to say on his own terms for Charles Leclerc. Obviously, that was kind of what was promoted in the media. Kimi Raikkonen kind of swapped positions for him, letting young talent come in. So in that way, you know, he is very much respected. Obviously, Sauber, you know, an old team for Ferrari, obviously with the Italian contacts. And obviously, you know, as I say, it's where Kimi Raikkonen started his career. Um, you know, Kimi then swapping places and going back with the team, obviously giving them support, obviously money and obviously showing the talent that Kimi has. The talent, if you say, that was obviously apparent when he won the race in the United States in 2018. Obviously, a big five year gap, you know, five plus years since obviously he won last time. Uh, I'm not saying he'll win again with Sauber, but obviously, he has that talent, he has that ambition. Yes, he's old, he's about 37, I think he did. I think he's the oldest guy in Formula One now. Obviously, now that Fernando Alonso has left. Um, so, you know, he's, he's still got that talent, he's still got that ambition, he's still got that drive. Um, the thing with Kimi Ryan that won't obviously go in his favour is just being with Salva really just being with Salva and being with Shivanazzi I don't think he'll get what he wants out of the car um, he wasn't right for Ferrari anymore I think he was kind of slipping down and obviously before he won with he won in the United States he'd gone over 100 races without winning I mean I was saying to Jordan I was like you know this is ridiculous you know Ferrari <laughs> you know the best team in the world they've been in Formula 1 for over 70 uh, they've, well they've been an automotive company yeah. sorry for over 70 years you know they can't have Kimmy in the team, you know, taking up a space for somebody like that. And I wasn't thinking of Charles, I was thinking of like people like Checo, uh, Roman Grosjean. Well, he was one of my prodigies, really. Obviously, when Haas came in, I love Roman and I thought he was going to be the best thing since sliced bread. And Kimmy was taking up the seat, but now he's gone to Sauber. I think it's a great thing. I'm going to follow him even more. I'm actually going to give him more support now that he's at Sauber. I just don't think he's going to do obviously very well. One, because it's a Sauber. You know, Sauber have never been a team on the top. And just having Giovinazzi as a teammate, and uh, it's Kimi. You know, he's got the ambition. It's just, it's just not his time uh, anymore. But you know, fourteenth is obviously very, very good. And obviously, he's beat his teammate. You know, Giovinazzi. Thirteenth um, place, Kev Magnussen. Obviously, the Haas guys. You know, this season they've kind of flew under the radar. Now, since they started in twenty sixteen, I mentioned, I mentioned all the way through the, ep- the the year that obviously they finished sixth place in Australia. 
the uh, Roman, sorry, finished six in Australia. Obviously, the highest finish for a non for a, a new constructor in Formula One since two thousand and two with Mika Salo since uh, Toyota came in. So I think that was a great feat. Uh, got points again in Bahrain and then through the season, it was mainly Grosjean to Gutierrez at that point. You know, twenty seventeen, you know. F- that was okay, a few points here and there, but flew under the radar again. 2018, you know, progressive, but they're not really they're not really a progressive team. They're just, you know, they're like a so-so kind of team, uh, has, but they're always there, you know, they do what they need to. Uh, Magnussen, I think, is a good driver. He's not as good as Grosjean. That's why, obviously, I've got Grosjean in 12s. But, you know, Magnussen, yeah, I think strong performance from him. You know, Q3 here and there, and, and yeah, I think he'll have a good season. Uh, that's kind of the same as what I'm going to say for Grosjean as well, obviously, but with Roman, you know, big support. Uh, I do think that he'll have some standout uh, moments of this season, obviously particularly the French Grand Prix. I've got a feeling that he'll really rock up there. I'm hoping that he gets a few podiums, uh, kind of the same as what he did in 2012 with uh, Lotus Renault. You know, he got a few podiums here, here and there. He got one in Canada. You know, he did quite well. Um, and I hope it goes. To, I hope it's a 2012 season for Roman. Apart from the part where he crashed in Spa and got a race ban, let's, let's just not hope he doesn't do that again. Um, <clears throat> 11th place is Sergio Perez now. <clears throat> He was a bit of a he was a bit of a prodigy a few years ago. You know, he was at Sauber, uh, he went to McLaren, then obviously went back to Force India. Obviously, that's where he retains now. You know, so it's it, it's it was good for Sergio then. I think he's a very strong, promising driver. He had a good season last year. You know, some good performances, really outshining obviously his teammate um, Esteban Ocon. The best race that Sergio did was obviously uh, Belgium. Well, they both did. Obviously, Force India is fantastic uh, or the racing point for him, as, as I should say now that was really amazing obviously if you remember Chaco actually went in the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix obviously I was there to witness that just before the safety car uh, came out obviously after Fernando crashed at, at, at La Source um, you know, so it was a good performance by him um, and yeah 11 players not much to say about that I feel like Sergio's going to be there you know good strong uh, promising Q3s Hoping a few podiums. I'm hoping he's there. You know, hopefully in Mexico, let's say he performs. You know, like we've seen some good performances by him. Like, for example, 2012 uh, Malaysia. Let's hope he can get back to doing that again. Then obviously tenth place, uh, very upsetting, Mr. Neely man. Now obviously he's not Neely. He's got it. Tenth place. That's and that's a point. Uh, sorry, that's you know getting it a top ten. Obviously that's good. That's good points. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that he gets there. I'm hoping that he gets some po- podiums at least because he's been in Formula One for what is it now about 13, 14 years, and he hasn't got a, po- a podium. You know, that's like, oh my God, come on. He got pole position once and he's never stopped talking about it. Uh, so Nico Hulkenberg, I really hope that he pulls it out of the bag there. You know, he's got a very strong teammate this year. The team is very, very strong. I think there's been so much hype around Renault. It's absolutely crazy. They're thinking that they're going to be like Mercedes in, you know, 20... 20- 12 you know absolutely nowhere and then 2013 you know they don't they didn't dominate in 2013 but obviously they got some wins and they turned it around ready to catapult themselves obviously into the v6 and, and dominate an era so I'm, I'm excited for Renault and obviously I'm very excited for, for Nico Hulkenberg so obviously that's my 10th to 14th the guys who will be you know there competing but just not really on the mustard like the guys in the top 10 are yep. Uh, so Jordan, you know what is your 10th to 14th? So my 14th to 10th goes like this I go 14th Kimi Reitman 13th Carlos Sainz, 12th Lance Stroll, 11th Nico Hultenberg, and 10th Roman Grosjean. Now, obviously, Kim Reitman being in 14th place, going to the Sauber, um, obviously, I was, uh, quite a surprised move, but when you when, when you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, obviously, Sauber being linked to Ferrari, Kimmy just wants to stay in Formula 1. He just lives 20 minutes down the road from Sauber's factory, apparently. So, obviously, Kimmy's at that age where he's like, he doesn't want to be, you know, gallivanting here, there, and everywhere. You know, he's got a, he's got a son, I believe. I think he's only got the one. I think he's only got the one. Obviously, congratulations to Jensen Button on that note as well for having his, for, for having his child as well. Random, random point, I just thought of there. So I th- so I think I think I think Reitman is going to have a good good is going to have a good year. You know he's got a vast amount of experience, loads of race wins. I think twenty one now the most successful Finnish driver. I want to say I think he, I think he overtook Mika Hakkinen at uh, the at the US Grand Prix last year. So obviously br- obviously brilliant for that. He's going to bring a lot of experience for Sauber. This is going to help them a lot in the future. But obviously this season he's not going to do anything spectacular. Don't don't ex- don't expect them to see him on the podium, race wins or anything like that. 30th place, Carlos Sainz. Now, I'm very, very excited to see what Carlos Sainz can provide for McLaren. Very good driver. I'm a, I, I, wouldn't, I, would say I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan of his. I, I, I like him as a driver, but I think I might like him more. Now he's with McLaren, I might, you know, get, obviously give him a lot more attention. You know, he, obviously he's a Spaniard, replacing a Spaniard, obviously replacing Fernando Alonso. He's got big boots to fill at McLaren because McLaren are a team in dire straits right now. You know, was it seven years without a race win? It's diabolical. We need something from somewhere, and can can Carlos Sainz, you know, 
give McLaren what, what they need. I mean, I believe he can, but he is going to be no fan of Alonso. I did say this when he, when it was announced. I was like, Alonso can, as like I said before, Alonso can get something extra out that car, but can call a science. I doubt it. I can't see that happening. So, what, but you know, what, you know, what, what, what I'm pretty much trying to say is that will call a science be able to do put it on the line when it really matters and get McLaren into Q2 when you know like Alonso did. And I don't think he, I don't think he'll be able to do that if we've, if we have got the car like we have had for the past season or two. So that's Carlos Sainz 30. 12th place Lance Stroll with Racing Point or Force India, whatever you want to call him. I don't know what they're going to be called. But he's got a lot to prove because he's been getting a lot of stick from the media. Oh, Lance Stroll, you know, daddy buying his seat and everything, which is fair enough. I understand that. I mean, as I said before, when it was announced that Lance Stroll was going to Force India, like, his dad bought the team. Of course he's going to employ him. Of course he is. It makes it makes sense. And now, Lance Stroll, as like Lyle said, is, was he ready for Formula 1? I personally don't think he was when he first joined Formula 1, but he's now got two full seasons behind his belt. He's got, a be, I would say, a better, he's in a better team with a better car, so he's going to have to, you know, step up his game and prove a lot of people wrong. You know, can he handle that pressure? I really don't know. As like I said, as the season progresses, he might, he might fumble a bit at the start, but then he might find his stride, get comfortable with the team, and then we might be seeing a brand new Lance Stroll. He could, I would even say, he might, I would say, put him in the top 10. But as like I said, it's, it's so close in this in this in this prediction, this table. I don't know who's going to finish where right now. Eleventh uh, place, Nico Hulkenberg. I don't know how Renault's going to fare. Some saying, as like I said, some saying they're going to have a brilliant season. Some saying that they're not. You know, I, I, I don't really want to say much on Nico Hulkenberg. I like him as a driver. I think he's really really good. He can, you know, as like I said, he, he can put it on the line when it really matters. This season, I don't know how it's going to go. He's got Ricardo. As long as I, you know, he has got Ricardo as a teammate. Will Renault, you know, provide a lot more for Ricardo than Hulkenberg? Will they kind of like cast the Hulkenberg to one side? I don't know. I don't know what kind of team. I don't know what kind of a team um, uh, Renault are to, you know, whether they're Nico Hulkenberg. But I think if he if he does get absolutely dominated by Dan Ricardo, I think a lot of question marks will be raised over Dan over um, Nico Hulkenberg's future. You know, will he stay in Formula One for 2020? You know. As I said, only time will tell. In 10th place, I've got Roman Grosjean in the Haas. Now, Haas had a really, really good start. To, well, I say good start, they had good pace. You know, whether the pit crew say it, otherwise, I, you know, that's that's for another story. But the Haas had a really good car last year. They had really good pace. You know, 2017 replica, replica car of, of, of a Ferrari. Who knows? Debatable. I really don't know. But I think they're going to have another strong year. Mid-table finish, it, it, it's going to be key. I think Haas might get, you know, you know might get, you know, fourth or fifth, or you know, push that it push that bit further to keep that consistency going. I think that I think that that is what they're going to try to achieve. They are, I would say, they will try to achieve the fourth place finish. But I think Renault might just pit them to that position. As like I said, it's going to be so so close this year, guys. It's going to be absolutely tremendous to see who's going to finish. Whereas, like I said, it's not going to be about pace or anything. It's probably going to be about reliability and you know a lot, a lot of luck as well so that's my 14th to 10th 14th to 10th place alex you've been holding there for a while i do apologize what is your 14th to 10th place and why right so i think this is where it gets different isn't it? i think we've really started yes, to go different does. ways now so yeah i'm going <laughs> with in 14th i've got a giovanazzi in 13th yeah. grosjean 12th magnuson 11th stroll 10th raikkonen I can see you, your faces when you saying when I said wow. stroll there in the corner of my eye. <laughs> um, I'll try and explain them the best I can, but I think All right, okay. Giovinazzi in 14th. I think Sauber, like I thought, they might be a bit of an on, underdog coming into the season. They, in, in my opinion, they improved so much last year, and they're on a bit of an upward slight trajectory. And with that increased yeah. support now from Ferrari over the last couple of years, I, I really see something special coming together with there. I can't see them going for. Like podiums, I mean, they might get one lucky one here yeah. or there, but I can't really see them going out there and getting one every weekend. But I think their car is ge like genuinely going to be like mid pack now. I think I sort of said they'd be like fifth or sixth best team on the grid. So that's the reason I put Giovinazzi there. Of course, I've already said Russell, I think, probably going to be the best rookie on the grid, but I think Giovinazzi is just going to have that much of a better car that's going to mean that Giovinazzi stays ahead. So then, third and twelfth, uh, the Haas cars, Grosjean and Magnussen, I think they're just a a very reliable duo now. I mean, okay, Grosjean has his, has his ups and downs, and so does Magnussen. But as a team, together yeah. as teammates, I think they do really well as a as a squad basically, and they they always bring home a decent amount of points. And I think 
ever since Haas came in in 2016, they've just kept getting better and better and better. And I don't know whether they're going to be able to go much better without having to have a, a massive budget, but it's going to be interesting to see what they do over the next couple of years because I don't know whether they're going to have to hire a really big name driver to make something special and go to the next level in terms of like sponsorship and all that. But I, th I think it's just a reliable duo in the midfield, 13th and 12th, Grosjean and Magnussen. So I put Stroll in P11 and I don't know what to really say about this to, to convince people, but I really don't think Stroll is as bad as some people think he is. I mean, I, I know yeah. you some maybe you guys think maybe he's not good enough for Formula One. I maybe have a slightly different opinion on that. I think Lance Stroll is a pretty talented driver. I think he's shown that on a couple of different occasions, but his problem, in my opinion, is just this consistency because you see. One race he's yeah. there in like 18th, 19th, but then suddenly he's up there on the back end of the points in a couple of races. So I think he needs to just prove himself. And if he's consistent and if he's learnt over the last couple of years, he will you know, yeah. be able to challenge for those points on a bit more of a regular basis, especially in the car we expect to be better. But at the same yeah, time, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that, you know, it comes back to bite him. Maybe Williams end up having a better car or something. It would be kind of funny. But yeah, so I put, yeah, Stroll in P11. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen, as I said already, Sauber, I think it's going to have a pretty decent car. So that's the reason yeah. I put him up there. I think, I don't know, it would be kind of funny if he like, bags the surprise podium. I don't think it'll be through like, genuine pace. I think that, you know, a couple of things have to fall into place for him to get one. But I think it'd yeah. be great for Formula 1 if it happens. I mean, we saw Charles de Clare, I think it was in Brazil, like battling with Vettel in the Ferrari for a couple of laps. So maybe the Sauber yeah. is not so bad after all. We'll see. But um, yeah, so you wanted me to continue on to the up to P4 now, didn't you, to, to get all the way yes. up there. So, right, the pressure's on now. This is where I can see us going really this different is, ways. It's getting intense now, it's getting intense. Yeah. Hold on your hat, everyone. This is gonna get good. Right, okay. <laughs> so, I put in ninth place, Sergio Perez, eighth place, Daniel Ricciardo, seventh place, Hulkenberg, sixth place, Gasly, fifth place, Bottas, and fourth place, Charles Leclerc. Right, so I, I know the big one that everyone's going to be asking about here is why have you put Ricardo behind Hulkenberg? But I'll get into that in a second. So I put Perez just in P9. All the horses. <laughs> I put Perez in P9. Uh, I think, just like I was saying with Stroll, I think the racing point is going to be a pretty decent car. I think it's probably going to be just behind. The, I think it's probably going to be the fifth best car behind the big three and then Renault. Uh, but yeah. so I think that'll be enough to get Perez into the top ten. And then he always bags the lucky podium. So I think we'll probably see him in the top 10 of the championship as he always is. Then Ricardo in 8th and Hulkenberg in 7th. Now this is the one that I wasn't really sure about when I made my own sort of similar sort of prediction video. I was like, what do I do here? Because the reason why I put Hulkenberg yeah. ahead is because he's had multiple years now in that car. The team started forming around him and they've really developed that car around him. Ricardo's jumping in there. I know he's, you know, got the big bucks. He's the guy at the moment that, you know, they're going to be focusing on him, but Hulkenberg <coughs> knows the team inside out at this point. So I think that it will take a couple of races for Ricardo to sort of jump into there and familiarise himself. And I think Hulkenberg, okay, he hasn't had a podium in his like F1 career, but I really do think this guy's very talented. And I think maybe we might be surprised and maybe we'll see him ahead of Ricardo in the championship. But as you guys said, he's a bit of a nearly man. So whether that happens once again, it will be quite interesting to see. But I think the battle between Ricardo and Hulkenberg is going to be really interesting. I think it's the first time in a long time Hulkenberg's going to have a teammate that really can challenge him. Of course, he had Perez a couple of years back and it was quite close between those two, but I think Hulkenberg's developed a lot. And looking at last season's results, Hulkenberg really stood out for me. Um, but then we go into the top six, obviously we're getting to the big teams now. Gasly, I think he's gonna be, you know, be, played to, sorry, be made to play second fiddle to Verstappen throughout. That Red Bull is so clearly a Verstappen team right now. And I think that's part of the reason why yeah. Ricardo left. So I think that's why it might be tough for Gasly to break in. I think he might get one victory and a couple of podiums, but I can't really see him going out there and really challenge you for a championship like we'll speak about in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's the reason I put Gasly P6. Bottas put P5, similar story. I think Mercedes is so evidently uh, a Hamilton team. So I think Bottas mm. will be better than last year. I mean, it's going to be pretty much impossible for him to do worse if the car's uh, somewhat decent because he's had, he had a terrible 2018. So he can't really do too yeah. much worse than that. I mean, if he just gets a couple of victories, I think he might be good enough to keep his seat going forward because I think Hamilton kind of likes him as a teammate because he doesn't really present much of a challenge. But yeah, I think Bottas will be a bit, you know, a bit better. But I think the Mercedes car is once again going to be sort of a bit too good for him in a way and I think he's going to be outshone by Hamilton which we'll speak about in a minute but then Charles Leclerc in P4 yeah. I think the reason I put him in P4 is I think 
the first couple of races will be a sort of a learning phase. We saw that with Sauber as well. It took him a couple of races to get mm -hmm. going. And I think that might be the same in Ferrari. And we know as soon as there's sort of a bit of a deficit between two drivers, Ferrari are like, oh, we'll just prioritize number one driver for the rest of the season. It sort of just happens yep. like that. And I think that will happen with Charles Leclerc. And I think the Ferrari president has already said they want Vettel to win the championship, which is probably not great for, the, for Leclerc. But, you know, if Leclerc's leading the championship yep. after the first couple of races, I think he's got a genuine shot. But I feel like they're going to kind of make all the eventually, you know, all the possibilities are going to go Vettel's way. And if he, if he bottles it then, I mean, fair play, go and win it, Leclerc. Anyway, so that's my top four. And who's next? Who's going for their, their uh, Me. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, <clears throat> so for my 9th uh, to 4th, I have got 9th, Kevin Magnussen, 8th, Sergio Perez, 7th, Daniel Ricciardo, 6th, Pierre Gasly, and 5th, Charles de Klerk. Now, the top 10 for me, it was just, it, well, I say the top 10, probably the top from, I was, I'll probably say 10th to 3rd was just impossible to choose. I mean, as like I said, I've got Kevin Magnussen in 9th, as like I said, I think Haas are going to have a very consistent season. I do like Kevin Magnussen as as a driver when he came at McLaren. I just I just like his attitude. I don't know what it is about about uh, Kevin Magnussen. I just he's just a likable character for me. I don't know why. I it's agree, just, it's yeah. weird, but I th yeah, I think I think he, he he is a talented driver, and I think that as like as like Alex said that you know that those two are pretty much are, it's just it's just natural. It's just it's just right that have like Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen. They know each other well. The team knows what they want. Um, so I think I think you know progressing on for for, uh, for this season I think Hassel can have a, a couple of good races where they are doing really really good and where people are going mm, is this like is this like is this what Hassel going to be now to where two or three races they might score one point between them in the, in the you know the next four or five races and everyone's going to be like mm, is it time to change the drivers I think that's what the season uh, that's what type of season it's going to be for them mm. if they're going with Sergio Perez. Nothing spectacular. I like Sergio Perez as a driver, but I think Racing Point or Force India, whatever they're going to be called, how how well are they going to do this season? I don't know. I, I think it was Lawrence Stroll said that in 2020, that's when the money is going to be properly shown. So I think this season is going to be like a development year. Learn the learn learn the car, learn everything else with, uh, with it. But I thought I think that the competition ahead is it's just, it's just it is just going to be too much. I believe for Racing Point to even try and you know knock on the door in the top three. To be honest, I can't see them doing that. But you know, I think I think Perez is going to have a good, a good season. A bit, a bit. I think he finished. Did he finish eighth or seventh for last year? He finished in this, roughly in the same position. So I think I think that is just that that's all that is required now of Sergio Perez so far. Seventh place has gone with Daniel Ricciardo in the in the Renault. Very very good driver, as we all know. Race winner. He, I can't. Ugh, I'd say I, I I I don't know what it's going to be like with Renault and Ricciardo. I really can't say it because one side of me is saying. They're going to do brilliantly and they're going to shock everybody. And the other half of me is going, don't count your chickens just yet because, you know, you don't know you, you don't know how it's going to go. And I'm just, it's giving me a proper headache to the point of where I've just literally just gambled and put Ricardo seventh. He might do better, he might do worse, depending on how reliable the car's going to be and how well Ricardo is going to drive. Because let's not forget, guys, that like he's going there in, with the ambition to win a world championship with this team in the future. And, the, you know, it has to pretty much, this season has to be you know, the next step up, they finished fourth last season, they want to be knocking at the door for top three, at least this season, and I don't know if they're going to be able to, to, going to, be able to do that, we know how dodgy Renault could be in terms of reliability, they are getting better, but will 2019 be that year where they go, right, we are going to compete with the Ferraris and the, uh, and the or even the Hondas now, if you, if you like, and the Mercedes as well, so that's going to be quite interesting, sixth, sixth, fifth, really? sixth Pierre Gasly, um, it's going to be squabbles at Red Bull next season. It's like I I do agree with, with what Alex said there. Max, uh, Red Bull is a Max Verstappen team, and he's going to be like like oh no, this this is my team. And I think if someone if someone that, if someone with a lot more experience was coming in, uh, maybe like a Hultenberg, let's say if he was going to to to, uh, to Red Bull, for example, I can't say it being loads and loads of squabbles. But the fact that you've got two young drivers hungry for success who both want to do well. I can see this relationship boiling over at any at any given stage, and it's going to be so so interesting to see them at, to see them you know at hammering tongs at each other throughout, throughout the majority of the season. It's going to be. I hope that is the case. I hope we do see like a, a Vettel Weber kind of relationship because that was brilliant to see, very entertaining. And I think that these two guys are going to provide that as well. Sixth place, Gasly. I can't see him. I can't, I can't see him doing do all right in some races as well. I don't know how well he's going to do in his first year at Red Bull. A lot of pressure was on the young lad. Very good driver. Let's not forget that. Top six at least. Charles Leclerc in P5. Biggest question. 
fair throughout this season, uh, throughout the winter rather, and this season, is Charles, is Charles Leclerc going to be Vettel? My opinion, no. I like Charles Leclerc, he's a very good driver, loads of, you know, he's a bunch, bunch of talent, he will win a World Championship in the future, but for me, I, 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 was, sitting, I was pretty much thinking about this going, would, do I generally see Vettel beating Leclerc? And I'm like, yes, I think he will. I think it will be close at the start, but I think Vettel will just kind of edge away a bit. I think because obviously Ferrari from last season they are on a you know they need to push, they need to improve. What what what's what's the word I'm looking for? They need to improve, not crashing. That's the word I'm looking for. They need to improve, not a crash. Well, one driver in particular as well. So I, I think Leclerc it will put some pressure on Vettel, but I think Vettel's been in the situation before. And I think he's going to be you know quite clued up as to what's go, what, what is going on. Leclerc is going to have a solid year. P5, very, very impressive uh, debut season for Ferrari. Fourth place, Max Verstappen. Again, he's, he, he is going to, he now has pretty much the full face of the, of the team now. Ricardo's <laughs> gone. It's now, he's now the number one driver. He's now the leader of the team. He's now 21 years old, I believe, 22 in September next year. So, you know, he's getting on. I think this is his fifth season now. He's got a lot of experience behind him as well. So, very excited, very excited to see this. Um, I think you will just miss out on the top three, however. But I think it is going to be very, very tight. You might just miss out on the last race. I think a lot of these positions will come down to the last race where who's going to finish in the top ten, who's going to finish in the top three, who's going to finish as world champion. I think it is going to go all the way down to the wire. So, Lyle, what's your t uh, ninth to fourth and why? Right, OK, guys. Um, now... Firstly, I don't know how to say these because I mean you're you're going to be so English, shocked. Like English, I don't know, English, I don't know what, I don't really know what to say. You're going to be so shocked. Um, so <laughs> uh, in ninth place is just standard Daniel Ricciardo, obviously a Renault guy. Um, now are you ready for this? Are you ready? Oh, Eighth place, Lando Norris. Ooh, seventh place. Oh, that is a big call. <laughs> seventh place, Valtteri Bottas. Sixth nice. place. Carlos Sainz. Right. Fifth place, <laughs> fifth place, Pierre Gasly. And in fourth place, Lewis Hamilton. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. Right, okay. Right, so okay. let me just, let me just, let, let me just, let, okay, let, let me just, let me just do this. Okay, right. right. Daniel Ricciardo, ninth place. Now, so with Daniel Ricciardo, okay, um, basically he's been having some nightmares last year. And there's been one guy who's kept coming home in his nightmares, and that guy is called Fernando Alonso. Now, really? you know, so, so, so let's rewind to last year, to, you know, mid-level last year, around, you know, it was around like Hungary kind of time, you know, British Grand Prix, Germany, Hungary, that kind of way. You know, Daniel Ricciardo had already had a few retirements with the team. He's had, he had wins, you know, obviously if you remember China, you know, is one of his best. But he was having some reliability problems. Uh, Red Bull also announced that, well, they did that earlier in the year, that they were going to go to Honda. And, um, you know, when the drivers, like the staff, and obviously the people in the team, like Adrian Newey, Christian Honda, when they were all, you know, getting, getting ready for this Honda change, because obviously something had to change from Renault, not so much because Renault were bad, but Renault were inconsistent and... Basically, they've just been falling out of love with them since they'd won, obviously, all their championships with them in 2013. Remember, in 2015, they had to change the name to Tag Heuer. They couldn't have the name Renault on the, on the car, which was a bit stupid because, obviously, everyone knew it was a Renault car. So that was a bit of a strange relationship. But then, as soon as that was released, and as soon as, you know, both Ricardo and Verstappen had had, you know, reliability problems, Ricardo said, no, I can't go to Honda. I've got to stay with Renault. Uh, yeah, Renault, for some reason. And even though Ricardo was having problems, he had to jump ship and go to Renault and I always remember he released that it was either before or after Hungary I want to say after because he retired in Hungary with a problem so did Verstappen and you know with that bad car with that bad reliability and the bad power unit that you know Red Bull had yeah. Ricardo saw something in Renault saw something in Renault that you know they were going to succeed and that's why I said Fernando Alonso was in his nightmares because I don't think it was about Renault succeeding I think it was about Honda. I think Fernando Alonso was gone to Ricardo and said, "Okay, Verstappen, he's too young. He doesn't understand it. You know, it's rated R. He can't see it. You know, Christian Horner, he's not going to change his mind. You know, he is the boss. Mm. I'm coming to you. I can save you. I can save you from going to Honda and you know struggling like I did. You know, for all them years at McLaren. And then Ricardo went, "Okay, yeah, I understand, mate. I'm going to go to to Renault and, and save myself from Honda. That's what I think's happened. Um, I just don't want to see why Ricardo went to Renault." I understand it now that you know he didn't want to be with Honda. Obviously, he didn't want to be with Verstappen. He saw something in Renault, and he's kind of between a rock and a hard place uh, uh, 
Ricardo. You know, it's really complicated what he's going to do. There wasn't really a right way or a wrong way. I think it's just kind of strap yourself in and just see see where Ricardo takes you. But I think he's going to still have a good season with, and obviously he's beating Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, eighth place, Lando Norris. Right, okay, so um, obviously <laughs> Alex, Alex Post, McLaren, you know, really, really low down. I think it was Sainz, the first McLaren driver he mentioned. Jordan did also. I think they're going to be the biggest change this year. They've been quite oh, very quiet. You know, they've always, they've been very, very kind of, yeah, playing everything close to the chest. I think, you know, in addition, um, you know, to, um, in addition to the Honda engine, obviously uh, more focus on their power unit. Obviously, Renault have gotten stronger as well. Obviously, more reliability, more money. And obviously, uh, now that they've got Ricardo and obviously Renault as a, as a manufacturing team have kind of upped their game. I think McLaren are really going to turn it around. Uh, I think Lando was a very successful driver. I think he is good. When he came into the program, obviously, um, I was like, okay, yeah, I think you know he's going to be good, and, and yeah, I think he's going to have a great season. Um, seventh place, Valtteri Bottas. Now, with Valtteri, um, I want to say he's a bit like Weber 2013. You know, Hamilton's not like Vettel. He's not bullying uh, Bottas out of the team with his team orders, but he's definitely... Um, well, you remember Multi 21, and you remember what was happening in 2013. You know, Vettel was kind of getting the team on his side, you know, getting all the team orders in his favour, and he was getting everything in his favour and kind of neglecting Weber. And I feel like that's what's kind of happening with Bottas. And it's not really Hamilton's fault, it's just more the team's fault. Like, for example, you remember Russia, you remember the kind of the rigmarole with the team orders, you know, you go here, you go here. You know, Valerie does an amazing lap. We did an episode on it. Valerie does a great pole position lap. And he's totally, you know, finished in second place behind Hamilton. Hamilton feels bad and lets him on the top step and all that. And I feel like that's happening with Valerie. He's got to put his foot down at some point. I feel like he is going to at this point, but I feel like getting kind of complicated in all of that team orders and, you know, I'm here, I'm ready, I want to win a world championship. But kind of, it'll separate him from the racing. And I feel like, yeah, that's as high as Valerie's going to end up. I don't think Mercedes are actually going to be as strong this year as well. I think you'll see that from the, from the start. You'll see Mercedes. There'll be a bit of a lack in what they, the, what their their performance is, because you know people like Martin Brundle and that have said you know Mercedes they aren't the best team on the grid. You know he uh, I can't tell you everyone who said it, but you know the commentators did say Ferrari were the better team on the grid. You know all through last year, probably up until about round you know fourteen fifteen you know whatever around like Singapore wasn't that. Yeah. You know, that's when Ferrari were the best team. You know, they had the best power unit. They were consistent. You know, both drivers were making it to the line. Obviously, Mercedes were as well, but Ferrari were better. The only thing that was letting them down was obviously Raikkonen just couldn't get us there like Bottas did. And obviously, Vettel kept having all, all of his problems, kind of caused by himself, but we'll cross over that. Um, sixth place is Carlos Sainz. Um, Fernando Alonso 2.0, but Fernando Alonso when he was there. Fernando Alonso, when if he returned, when he came to McLaren in 2015, if McLaren weren't with Honda, or they were with Honda, but they were good, that's what we're going to see with uh, Carlos Sainz. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see what he can do. Uh, I loved him at Toro Rosso. I thought he was a great driver. Uh, Renault just added to how good he was. Uh, I don't know which I thought was a better stint for Carlos Sainz, but yeah, I think he was a good driver. And he basically, he's made the right decisions, you know, going forward. And I think he'll do really well this year. Uh, obviously, McLaren will perform to the max. And then obviously, uh, then fifth place, Pierre Gasly. Um, Red Bull are definitely going to be there. Red Bull, you know, since um, even when it was like Coulthard Weber, but mainly when it was Vettel and Weber, you know, towards the start, 2009, 2010, you know, Red Bull have always been kind of like a quirky team. You know, they've been winning, but they've also been like, there's been a bit of a friendship. You know, they've always been doing ads and commercials and they've always been kind of getting on with each other quite well. To be honest, that was what the same as Vettel and Weber, you know, till about 2013 when they started to fall out with each other. Um, you know, that was the same with Kfia and Ricardo. They were a bit buddy buddy in that. Um, you know, tw uh, sorry, in 2014, 2015. Uh, 2016, and obviously onwards, Verstappen and Ricardo have been good buddies. You know, they've been working together. They've been, you know, Red Bull kind of bring the light side of Formula One. I do like that. You know, Red Bull have always, you know, they brought the light side, the commercial, the kind of the accessible, the fun to Formula One. It's only really in the last few races, in the last few races of last season when it was like, okay, I don't really think I'm happy working with you anymore. Ricardo decides to jump ship to a little bit get away from Verstappen, but again, it was never, you know, it was never documented that they hated each other. You know, it was never documented that they weren't friends and that, you know, they didn't like working with each other. Um, but I think that Pierre Gassi and Verstappen will work together really, really well. You know, they've raced together, obviously, in the earlier formulas. He's young, he's hungry, he's, hungry, he's European. I feel like he's going to be a good addition to the team. He's going to work well with, obviously, everyone, you know, that there, like Christian Horner, people like that. I feel like Verstappen will work well with him. Uh, Gassi will give him a run for his money. 
and and yeah, there's not much to say about that. I think that Gazi is going to be a great addition to the team. Really, like a Vettelin Weber, you know, back in the day, like John said, you know, like a 2012 Vettelin Weber, like a, you know, things like that, where they were they were good friends on and off, on and off the car and and things like that. Um, and then fourth place, uh, Lewis Hamilton. Right. Now, obviously, Jeez, I heard Jordan there. Wow. That was insane. I'll, um, I'll have a look. I'll have a look. Have now with Hamilton. Um, I don't think Mercedes are going to be that good. You know, I've said that before. I don't think Mercedes are going to. I, I don't think Mercedes are going to be there. Right. Um, Lewis Hamilton. Now he's he's always had five. He's been at the top. He's climbed them. He's climbed the mountain. He's not on his way down by for, by by choice. I just don't feel like he's going to be there. You know, he's been in Formula One now for you know is that eleven years, twelve years. You know, it's not. I just don't think it's Lewis Hamilton's time anymore. He's got some really big guns coming for him. I mean, I'll tell you something, Lewis Hamilton. He's going to finish, you know, 90, 97 percent of the race. He's going to do. He's going to pull. He's going to point, you know, nice hundred percent of the ninety seven race. He's going to do the ninety seven percent of race. He's going to do. He's going to do the best he can. He's just not going to be there. I, I just there's not much to say really about it. I just feel like there's just better drivers out there. There's more competition, and obviously that's what I'm going to jump onto straight away with top three. Now, obviously, this is going to be third place. Second place and obviously the 2019 world champion. So obviously I'm going to list third place. Then obviously I'm going to jump into second place because obviously that means that there'll be 18 drivers done, and obviously you won't know who's going to win. Um, so let's get started with my third place. Who's going to make it onto the bottom step of the podium? Uh, now, it, uh, in my third place, I'm going to say uh, Ferrari's young gun of Charles Leclerc. Um, now very excited for him. Um, I'm going to actually I'm, I'm going to actually I'm going to explain it first before I jump into the others. Um, now, when he first came in uh, to Formula One, the, I was I didn't really know too much about him. Um, now, obviously, he was you know a great friend of Joe Bianchi's. It was really his kind of calling to be in Formula One, obviously with Sauber, and he got so much out of the car. Obviously, I think it was with a P six or P seven in Russia, and obviously some really good performances from there. I love when people like that do that. For example, like one of my favorite drivers was Pascal Verlaine back in twenty sixteen when he got that point uh, in Austria for Sauber uh, for Manasari, and of course, obviously going back to like Joe Bianchi when he got his point. Uh, in Monaco, um, now with Shaw, I think it was really, really great. When he went to Ferrari, I was like, normally I'd think it's a bit too early, but for this one, I was like, that's, I think that's absolutely fine. I think it's great. I think that he's replacing Raikkonen. You know, like I've been seeing in Jordan all the way through the year. You know, I think that was a really good decision. I'm glad they got Raikkonen out, and I'm glad they put someone else in there. You know, worthy to compete with Vettel, worthy to be at you know what's considered the best or the longest. You know, kind of the the team of Formula One, really. You know, Ferrari have got so much. Uh, behind them, so I'm glad uh, Charles is there, and I think that he'll do great in third place. Um, you know, so so for him, for that, I mean, I think uh, you know, good few victories. I've got a feeling, right? I've got a feeling that he'll win in Monaco. Um, obviously, it's hard to overtake in Monaco, so you've really got to get on pole position. For example, that's why, like, when Schumacher we got pole position in 2012. I was like, oh my god, Schumacher's going to win a race, but obviously then he was, you know, demoted for his crash in Spain. So it's hard to overtake in Monaco. So I think Charles might get. Quality, uh, poor position there. I've got a feeling he'll win there, but yeah, nevertheless, he'll win in a few races this year. And I think third position will be great for him. Obviously, of course, he's not going to be Vettel. I think that's a given, but I think he's going to do a really, really great. And obviously, like in my predictions have just shown, he's beaten the five time world champion. So obviously, now it's second place and the world champion. So my 2019 world champion, okay, big one, is. Ben, yeah, drum roll, please. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, Sebastian Vettel of Ferrari. Now, now Seb Seb was on top last year. He was doing some great races. Obviously, again, one of the races that I That's went that. to uh, was Silverstone. Obviously, he dominated Silverstone. Even though Lewis Hamilton had his problem, obviously it was was a plum. Like, he spanned at the first corner. I think he went last place. Then he finished was it second. So a second or something like that, you know, really, really great performance by him. But Sebastian Vettel had it in the bag. He'd done some great performances. And, you know, me and Jordan were there just to count down these just ridiculous, stupid mistakes that Sebastian was making. You know, he crashed in Germany. Okay, fine, he aquaplaned a little bit, but it really looked like it was his fault. You know, he crashed in, you know, he spanned a few times. He crashed in Italy with Lewis Hamilton. You know, getting tangled up in a bit of a stupid kind of thing. I mean, I know it was Lewis Hamilton. It was... More of the blame was on Lewis Hamilton, but I mean, come on, Seb, you can't afford to do things like that. You know, he spanned in the USA, you know, it was reliability problems that weren't his fault, yes, but, you know, Seb kind of, he didn't help the situation. He made stupid mistakes, and, you know, ultimately, the only person that beat Sebastian 
was almost Sebastian, or at least it was in the start anyway. You know, or Lewis, he, he let Lewis Hamilton catch up to him, and then obviously since then he knows how good Mercedes are. Mercedes are going to swallow him up whole, and then you know take the win. So you know, Sebastian Vettel kind of shot himself in his foot last year. They had the better car. I'm just hoping that doesn't happen again. And I think that Seb will have learned from his mistakes. He's got a better teammate. Obviously, the car's going to be better. I, I believe that the team is better anyway. I believe they're better than Mercedes. You know, I believe that for a number of years, probably not so much when they first came into the V6 era, but probably since Nico Rosberg left Formula 1. So, like, the end of the 2016 season, 2017, 2018, and obviously this year, I believe Ferrari have been the better team, and they're going to be. Uh, which obviously that means if you've been keeping up, that means that in second place is Max Verstappen. Now, with Max, I think, great guy, great, you know, very, very strong. Obviously, he's not a young gun anymore, uh, you know, very much my age. Obviously, he's my favourite driver. And uh, I, I think that he's going to have a great season. I think with Pierre Gassi with him, you know, competing with him, that's what you need. You need a good competitive driver with him. I believe that the team's going to be working in his favour. Um, I think that Honda will be a struggle. But I feel like Verstappen will get as much as he can out of this struggling kind of car and this struggling team. When I say struggling, I don't mean at the back, but it's just not going to be such a walk in the park like I think people like Christian Horner and, 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 and you know and people like that are thinking. Um, you know, maybe Renault was the better option, but with Renault, but with Red Bull, they're just going to get the best out of the car. And yeah, as as uh, you know, you both said, you know, it's Verstappen's team now. You know, now that you know Ricardo has gone. You know, it's now Verstappen's team, and he's got control of what can happen. So I think Verstappen, you know, good strong second place for that. It is going to be tight against Charles Leclerc. Obviously, Charles is probably going to be the driver of the year. You know, looking at this, just just eyeballing it now, he's probably going to be the driver of the year. If not him, someone like probably Carlos Sainz. Uh, but you know, so so that's my predictions for the 2019 season. Now, obviously, I can see from your uh, your faces that you're just not. You, you you're shocked, you know. I mean, I'm <laughs> shocked as well. You know, making this, it's uh, yeah, it's insane. It's, it's, but but yeah, that's my predictions. Uh, so Jordan, obviously, third place to your 2019 world yeah. champion, please. Right. Well, first of all, I do want to apologise about uh, Lyle's massive antics. It's not happening. <laughs> uh, he, he hasn't he hasn't taken his pills this week. I do apologise for that. Haven't. Um, no. I'm, I'm behind. Uh, no, but the, no, but it is a good shout though. I mean, to be fair, as, as like I said, it, literally anyone can finish anywhere uh, so far. Well, but well. But the, but below the top six anyway. So obviously my third place, I'll go with Valtteri Bottas. Now, he's a driver that is under immense pressure right now. Not only from not only from the team, but from you know fans as well. Because abysmal, let's say 2018, didn't get any, didn't get any race wins. He could have won in Russia. He should have won in Russia. But obviously, championship was heading towards more towards Hamilton. Allowed him through. Everyone's going mental about it. I was like, oh, that is Formula One these days. We've seen it before, and we will see it again. It's just one of them things. And I think a way, I think what Valtteri Bottas needs to do, right, is he needs to set himself a target within the first five races, if the car is competitive, that is, to win a race and to pretty much, you know, settle everything that everyone's debating about whether Valtteri Bottas is actually a good enough driver to be able to win championships with Mercedes, to be able to, to be able to compete with Lewis. And I think that's that is going to be a struggle, um, and so I think yes, so I think third place for Valtteri Bottas, I think it is going to be realistic. It is going to be. Um, you know that should that should be at least the target. Maybe even go for second place, depending on how good he, he believes he can, he, how, how fast he believes he can go and how fast he can take this car. But I think he does need to set himself, you know, some good targets at, at the start of the year. Get himself in the right in the right mindset. Block everything out. Uh, forget about all about, about the it's James or whatever and all this rubbish. Just get just get get on the track. Do the job. Don't crash the qualifying like you did last season, please. Uh, and get a race win with I would say very early on and pretty much say look. I am the driver that I, 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 int I intend to be. I can stay in this team. I can compete with Lewis. Everyone just sh shut up, basically. So that leaves, obviously, two drivers, two very well-known drivers. Um, I've got Remain. And the, my 2019 Driver World Champion, I've gone for Sebastian Vettel. Now, I, I think I said him last year to win the title. And, obviously, look how wrong I was. Um, but last year, for me... Without a doubt, Ferrari's car was much, much quicker than the Mercedes. Maybe so much at the start, but the, as the season as the season progressed, the pace was was there. I mean, they showed in Belgium what a race Sebastian Vettel did in Belgium. Probably for me, his best race of the season, I, I would say definitely. And from from that moment on, I was thinking he, he can bring this fight to Lewis. This is going to be a you know race to the you know a race to the wire right Abu Dhabi. Who's going to win the championship? 
and obviously in Monza and you know then Singapore and obviously Russia, it, it just it just didn't go that way, and it was very very disappointing to see the very very disappointing to see the season end the same way it did in 2017, and it was like ugh. Okay, Hamilton's won again. Obviously, Hamilton a brilliant driver, probably one of the best in the generation. But so is Sebastian Vettel, and that's what a lot of people are quite, I think, forgetting that Sebastian Vettel is a four-time world champion. I think he's third on the all-time wins list. He's one of the best drivers of this, of this generation, and he knows that this year, like I said when I was discussing Charles Leclerc, he's got a brand new teammate coming in, younger teammate. We're seeing this at Red Bull, and look what happened. I know it was a brand new engine, I think that I, didn't, I don't know if Vettel didn't really understand the car as much as what Ricardo did, but Ricardo got three wins that year, Vettel didn't, he threw a hissy fit almost, and went to Ferrari, obviously there was, no, like, there was probably no, no options for, for 2020 to go, uh, should he spit his dummy out again this year, but I think Sebastian Vettel is going right, is going right. okay, two years I've mucked up, this year I think Ferrari will, will produce uh, probably their best car since, obviously they've got a new Obviously, uh, uh, Mauricio River Bennett is out the door. Got you know, bringing in loads of new staff. There's a brand new face at Ferrari. I think we could see a new Ferrari this year, a new kind of like more open Ferrari. I, I, I would have thought, which which will be nice to see because they are like you know they are the top team of Formula One. They are like they've been there since day one essentially, or day two, or whatever, whatever, whatever it was, or race two rather. Um, and obviously Vettel knows that he's under immense pressure this year to try and deliver, to try and get that championship, if not fight for it till the very end. Because if he does lose out of the championship and it does go right to the wire, I think people will go, yes, Sebastian Vettel is as good a driver as, as we all believe to be. Because at the moment, his reputation is on the line because he is a bit of a clumsy driver at, at, at times as well. He made some silly mistakes. He needs to stop that, get his head together, get his act together, move on and just pretty much show the world what he can do. And I believe he will do that. I'm a big fan of Sebastian Vettel. I also, am, I also, am, I also am of Hamilton as well, but I think Vettel will get his fifth world championship this year, and I think it will go down, go to the wire. So obviously, second place, Lewis Hamilton. As like I said, one of them has to be world champion for me. It's either going to be Vettel or Hamilton. I can't see anybody else going for it unless they produce some really bad reliability problems, which obviously is a possibility. Let's not forget. But from what I've seen on the last season and going off last season and the season before, and how these two drivers, you know, how, how reliable these two drivers can be, car wise, anyway. I think that it is going to go down the wire. I think Hamilton will just miss out. So that's my predictions. Sebastian Vettel World Champion, 5 time World Champion now. Two 5 time World Champions on the grid for 2020. Alex, what is your top three? Right, so yeah. I'm going to go, I think, slightly different to you guys. So Ooh, we're going to go yeah. third, first, second, as you guys have. So I won't yes. go through them all at once. I'll go through and explain each one as we go. So yep. I've put Max Verstappen in third place. I think that it could be quite likely he could go for the championship. It's going to be quite interesting to see whether the cars there underneath him. I feel like he's developed so much over the last couple of years and I think if everything goes to plan and the car is there for him, I think he sh you know, he's capable now of winning a championship. I think, in my opinion at least, he's grown so much and the consistency is there like it wasn't in like 2016 2017 but now in 2018 and yeah. onward I'm, I'm really impressed with him uh, but I think yeah he might just miss out on this one I think the car um, the, the, I think the, the, the car will be there in terms of the chassis but I think the the engine might just let him down and that you know they're still they're still trying to make catch up early Honda and we saw that throughout last year yeah. with Toro so so Unfortunately for Stappen, it might have been missed out. But for my champion, I'm going to go on the contrary to you guys. Uh, just because I think he's in like the form of his life, I'm going to go with Lewis Hamilton yeah. as my 2019 champion. But it, it, I think like you guys... It, it'll be one of them, at least. I can't see it being anybody else. <laughs> yeah. It will be. It's just literally flip, flip a coin. Heads, heads Lewis, tails Vettel for me. That's <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say similar like, similar to that. I, I might, maybe I'd add Verstappen into the mix of the cars there, but it's going to be so incredibly so. close. So I think yeah. it's going to be really, really exciting to see. I think it's really, with whatever car comes out on top you know, in the first five races, I think that might be the one. But it depends how much of a lead mm. they get over those first couple of races. Because we saw Mercedes last year come back and you know grab it with that better car. And Lewis Hamilton driving, like I think, like in my opinion, Lewis Hamilton drove the best he ever did in the 2018 season, especially in the yeah. second half. So, yeah, that's the reason I put Lewis Hamilton. I think that he's maybe just hit the peak of his career. I mean, of course, he's not going to have another 10 years, but he might have two or three more years right at the top. And I think he's just hit that peak or maybe hit it towards the end of 2017. But, yeah, that's the reason I put him at the top. I think Vettel, he's still like three, I think he's like three years younger than Hamilton. So he's still got time to go and win some more championships. But I think once again, he might just, just might miss out on it once again. But 
be perfectly honest, I mean, if I look at these top three, I mean, I'm just, I just really want to see a new world champion, to my opinion, even though I don't really support any of these drivers. As I said, I'm a Kvyat fan, so it's hard to be particularly biased towards <laughs> anyone up here. Uh, but I'd say I'd yeah. like to just see Verstappen with a championship, just because I think it would be something different. But, yeah, that's my top three. But it's, it's nice to see we all had something very different, wasn't it? We didn't all go with the same one, which is interesting. Yeah. That is interesting, yeah, I agree. Definitely. I, I agree. As, as like I said, it, it, it could go either way. It's going to be so exciting this season. I'm, I just want. I can't believe it's still January. To be honest, it's just the winter's going so slow. Just, just get so, over it, um, please. So obviously, uh, me and John say Sebastian Vettel, Alex, you say uh, Lewis. Now I've got a question for you uh, on Lewis. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that means he'll be six-time world champion. I mean, that's absolutely yeah. crazy. That obviously, um, he is the second most successful now. Obviously, chasing Michael Schumacher. So obviously, um, he's already got all out pole positions. Um, he be uh, obviously well. He did two champions in the same year, twenty eight, uh, twenty seventeen. He did obviously Ed Senna and Matt Schumacher. And me and John were actually there in Italy to see um, him take uh, the uh, record of Matt Schumacher. So obviously, so Alex, uh, no, I, think Alex, I think I think Alex was there as well. Oh, oh you were all there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh Alex, wow, Alex, Alex that's crazy. Yeah. Nice. So we, we, were, we, we were all there. That's so crazy. There that. we go. There um, we go. We were all there. Yeah. Wow. Um, where where uh, whereabouts were you sitting? Just on an um, off later topic. The second chicane, which is the general admission. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, me and John were in the like the main one, you know, obviously uh, overlooking the uh, yeah. We were actually we were on the chicane. I think we were on the chicane grandson that you're talking about on the FP one mm. during FP one FP two uh, on FP2, the Friday. But I'm not FP2 because sure. it was big. Yeah. And it, oh my! It, but yeah, absolutely amazing track. So yes, we were all there. I mean, that's a coincidence. That that's a stat attack as well, guys out there. <laughs> uh, so um, right, what I was going to say is so. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe that he's it's something like seventy wins, isn't he, at the moment? Obviously, Max Schumacher. We all know. You know, he's got 91 wins. Now, it was said that if Lewis Hamilton's in Formula One for the for the next, I think it was two seasons, he basically very he could be that uh, he could be that statistic. Now, obviously, that's Max Schumacher's like kind of like second biggest thing, if you like. Um, obviously, as well as the seven world championships. So, this is kind of a two part question. Do you think that Lewis Hamilton could beat Max Schumacher's 91 wins? And then also, do you think he's got a chance of chasing down Schumacher's seven world championships? Because obviously, a few years ago, like when he was three world championships, Lewis, you know, that feat was absolutely impossible, mm. the seven. But obviously, now it's very close, especially if he wins six, like you said. Yeah, I think it's weird. I think actually, he's got more of a chance of winning seven world championships than getting. Um, what 91 victories or surpassing yeah. it in 92 because I think yeah. the competition is closer I mean, when Michael was out there the Ferrari for a lot of those years was just by far the best car I mean I know the Mercedes was the best what, in 2014, 15, 16 and you know a decent part of 2017 as well but I feel like he might only get like five wins in a season and still become champion that's just going to be how close it is over the next couple of years so yeah. I think in all honesty he could Easier become or easily will become the seventh time world champion than what a 92 or 91 time race winner. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think he can do both, but I just don't know whether he's got the desire to be going or staying in Formula One to his maybe like 38 or 30, you know, mm -hmm. 35, 36, 38. I don't know, yeah. something like that. I don't know whether he's got the motivation. And, and obviously, and obviously, a lot of teams are catching up as well. Mm. Like, we've seen like with Renault as well, they're up there, Honda are going to be up there, Ferrari as well. So, obviously, it's going to be like. Obviously, when Ferrari was dominating, nobody could really have a sniff at the no. title up, and, up until 2005, when obviously Renault pretty much just went, nah, I've had no more Ferrari, it's going to be out, it's going to be out <laughs> in this year. But for, like, for, for Hamilton to then go on to win like 91 races, he's going to have to win, what, another 10 races one year and 10 races the next. And he's got a couple yeah. of years in him left. That's a tall order to ask from a driver who's coming into his mid 30s. Yeah. And if he does manage to do it, then put him down as probably the, the best F1 driver ever, in my opinion. If he, if he can do it, but I, I think I think I think yeah, I think Alex is right in terms of saying that he's got a better chance of getting seven world championships, possibly eight. I don't know. It depends, depending on how, depending on how, depending on how long um, he stays in Formula One, depending on how long he can be at the top, mm -hmm. uh, than getting ninety-one wins. I do want to see both. I do want to be alive to be able to witness Schumacher's record being matched, possibly beaten, and then possibly seeing the race wins. Beaten as well, then therefore we've lived through a brilliant generation of, of uh, Formula One and Jordan as well. I mean, just imagine well, not no, just yeah, just imagine obviously Mick Schumacher, he's in the Ferrari reserve drive and obviously in F2. Um, if let's Can't say uh, in 2020 or 2021, Mick Schumacher makes it onto the Formula One grid with Ferrari or you know, with one of their junior teams like Haas, for example, and yeah. Lewis Hamilton beats his record. 
he'll beat his record in front of Mick Schumacher and you never know Mick Schumacher could be there to compete against it's all unbelievably exciting um, but obviously as John yeah, said obviously Alex, Alex said you know nobody is done in Formula 1 even Kimi Wright and the oldest guy in Formula 1 who you know the statistic I absolutely love is that he's double the age of Max Verstappen you know when he remember when Max won in 2016 he's Kimi Wright and said he is double Max's age that's absolutely insane um, <laughs> anyway guys obviously that's we've talked for so long I think this episode is going to be over an hour <laughs> yes um, we hope we've been a very light episode yeah, we hope you've enjoyed it obviously thank you very much for yes. watching uh, this is our first episode back so obviously welcome back to everyone who watched us over the years if you are new to this channel obviously welcome uh, we hope you've enjoyed this content obviously there's a lot more to come we're still a month out uh, from Australia obviously uh, we're in we're sub 50 days now we're getting very very close can you smell the Australian air we are very very close now it's really exciting it's obviously we hope you can stick with us for 2019 so thank you very much for watching Obviously, also thank you very much to Alex, uh, who is thank our guest much, for today, our second guest on the F1 debate. Obviously, his input has been very, has been great for the channel. Obviously, as I've just yeah. said, um, we will leave his link to his channel down in the description box. So if you could please go and check it out, if he's a great guy to follow, and obviously um, to Good follow content. his uh, documentary that he's made on his motorsport uh, on, on motorsport. Uh, which obviously we mentioned last year in our 2018 uh, videos. So, guys, thank you very much for watching our first episode back in 2019. And until next time, guys, we'll see you later. See you, see you later, guys.